one, the only, Dominic Cooper is on the show. Look at this guy. Love it. Hey. How are you? It's nice to see you. It's I'm not... in the basement. Where, yeah, what? where are you in the basement? Where of what? Where am I again? I'm in, I'm in Spain, southern Spain. I'm in the basement of a hotel, and this is the room they've given me when I said I was coming on the show. And they, uh, but and it's fine. But you may you may occasionally hear a turd slipping past my head because it's all the pipe work of the entire entire building. I can't really show you. Can you see that here? Yes. Yeah, so every so often there's a there's a plop and a noise of rushing water. Nice. So, I like what you've done with the place. Talk me through this look. I'm loving this moustache. <laughs> it's, it's kind of Carmel. Look at that. I, I, look at, it's, are you modelling yourself on Ian Carmel right now? Is that what you're doing? I have. Oh, oh, it is kind of Carmel. Now, Carmel's is better. Although yeah. I, I can twist mine at the end. Oh, that's nice. That's a thrill. Yeah. But what's happened to your hair? What's going on there? <laughs> Show us. <laughs> what's, what's happened? I knew you'd do this. You know exactly what's happened. Well, they've shaped... They've, uh, I've got receding hairline, but... Oh, wow. What did you think? No, I think you look great. <laughs> 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 now, we've spoken many times, and you've been on the show, that we used to live together as flatmates. We lived together sort of around for about sort of two years, wasn't it, give or take? And what do you think lockdown would have been like if we'd have still been living together? I can't work out whether it would have been the best of times or worst of times. I think it may have become become awful. It was, I don't know. I can't. We would have had had to sort of get some bits and pieces and some furniture and stuff. We we were very happy with one another. I think for a while, but it would have got too much. You know, there was, there was many a morning I woke up when you were you, you were naked in my my bedroom, and there was a lot of kind of that that, that couldn't have gone on. And there, there would have been more more order. You had. I was trying to. Do you remember you came in and you just had a, a football boot over your scrotum? <laughs> I walked in your... But I only walked in your room. I'll tell you why I walked in this room with just a football boot over my... Um, what I like to call the prize is because Dominic and I rented a two-bed, two-bathroom apartment and Dominic took the biggest room with an ensuite and I had this tiny corner room where the rat bathroom cage. was over the... Which he used to call the rat cage, which was over, <laughs> over the hallway. And that bathroom, from the day we moved in to the day we moved out, never, ever worked. <laughs> and we never called the landlord about it. I would just walk through his room and use his <laughs> facilities. I forgot, about, I forgot that that was the reason. You're right, but why did you allow me to have that room? I, that's what I could never work out. I remembered later on when we lived together, when we when we were working together, that I put cockroaches in a fake pretend dead cockroaches, so you wouldn't take the bigger room. Was that you or Andy? I'm that was you Andy. Remember. No, you've done this twice. When you lived with Andy, the idea was you you you. They were like, oh, who should get the bigger room? And you planted cockroaches in the bigger room, <laughs> and went, oh my god! And then Andy was like, well, I'm not having this room, and you were like, no, let me have. Oh, okay, fine. That's just <laughs> that's just. Oh, but now. Right. You still live on the very same road that we used to live on, and I was very concerned. I've got to say, this photo was taken by a paparazzi picture. It was in all the newspapers. Now, I should say before I show this, you live on the third and fourth floor of a townhouse. So what's going on here, Dominic? What's happening here? <laughs> <laughs> you could understand. This, it was... It was, I think... The, the latter part of the first lockdown. And so that explains the, um, the grimace and the hair and the wild sort of look. The sheep was, on the, was outside and I'd been ordered to take the sheep back in. So as I was taking the sheep back in, I had to move the head. And the head was... Uh, the head I'd placed there to protect the car that was parked outside because I thought it would, it would uh, stop thieves. And that, the head was from the show I did called Preacher, and that's arse an arse face mask. And that sheep was from the form... Do you remember when we lived together and I, I came back with that sheep? It used to be in your house. From Tomorrow used, Drew. Tomorrow Drew, and I took it, I took it back from the, the green carpet that we had at the premiere. So this guy, uh, Arseface, was there to protect your cars, and you've got to say he did work for a while, because as soon as he went, you he, uh, had your... Car, you've had multiple cars stolen outside your house, but you, one of them's got a happy ending. Tell us that story. What happened? 
Uh, well, the, 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 uh, so I was leaning out of that window to, to, to bring that back in because it, the, I wasn't allowed it there. So, and as I was doing that, I was leaning out with our space and then I had to speak to the neighbour. So I got caught in that position for too long. I didn't want to be in that position. I wasn't just <laughs> stroke. I uh, had that weird mask on me. I was just, I was there for a reason. And then and because I took it all in, that like, really uh, soon after, and I, I would light that place at night and it would stare down onto the road. And yeah, one of the cars got nicked. And uh, amazingly, while I was away doing this job in Spain, I got a phone call from a, a police officer. It was unheard of. I thought the car's gone. I'd never see it again. And they found the car in, in the scrapyard in Surrey, very, very randomly. But it, and, and it was a car that I'd been saving for since I was since I was really young. As you know, I sort of had a love. That's why I got the moustache of Magnum PI. So I wanted to be like him. And I, I saved two penny pieces for just every time I could remember. People used to know the adults knew that this little kid was saving for a car, and they used to put it in the money in a big. Massive great sort of eight litre wine, empty wine bottle. And sadly, that money was stolen and spent on doner kebabs one evening in the house. <laughs> in the later, later on. So I finally managed to get the car, and the car got nicked, and I thought I'd never see it again. But a, a, a police officer phoned me and said, Hello, Dominic, I'd just like to tell you that your car is the lo last piece in a very large jigsaw, and it's been found. And it was found in a, in a scrapyard in Surrey, and it was about to be shipped off to Europe. So it was amazing. I was, I was yeah, so it was, it was nice. And you got back. it back yet? So, no. So I'm actually thinking that maybe the police officer is a liar and he's the actual thief because he actually asked me for the car keys. So it might be a big <laughs> ruse. Uh, now let's talk about your brilliant new show, Spy City. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what it's about and who you play. I play someone called Fielding Scott um, and it's about a uh, spy in, uh, who, uh, British spy who was in Berlin in the 60s when um, uh, Russia and uh, the Germans and the French had a, a stronghold for four sections of Berlin and it was just before the wall was going up. So he sort of uncovers and unearths what, um, what, what everyone was up to. And it's just a very secretive time, a very um, precarious time. And uh, it was very interesting finding out the, the dynamics of what was going on there and actually how scared everyone was after the war not to, to, not to make enemies again. And William Boyd and uh, the director Miguel have done so much work on this piece. And when I spoke to them, I sort of became obsessed with the history of it. And, Sort of how different things were, but also how similar things are now in, in terms of that with that wall and segregation and, and uh, oppression of people. I thought um, I really wanted to sort of divulge in, into that world and find out more about it and play someone who had many aspects of so sort of where all the spy thrillers ultimately come from. But well, it was um, a great experience. Well, you're brilliant in the show, as you are in everything you do.